Hello. Hello. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good day. Good evening. Good afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't make it that far. Lock well, I, che- I thank you. I because I went first. I never go first. I completely messed myself up. Listen, that was the Loch Ness game. It's not a game, and it's not about Loch Ness. But this is the Benjamin Nick Show, your number one, number one, number one, number one vintage TV podcast in the gnome world. Oh yeah, the world I'm, of garden um, gnomes. I'm not Benji. <laughs> And I'm not Nick. Well, we've got uh, a splendid show for you today. Um, we are talking about BBC News at 10 o'clock through the ages. No, we're not. We're talking about a very peculiar practice. Did you know that BBC News has not been at 10 o'clock for that long? So it wouldn't be a very long podcast. It used to be anyway. nine o'clock, wasn't it? It did, the, ni- the nine, nine o'clock, o'clock news. news. But dun, then they put it dun, on the same dun, time dun. as ITV to, to oh. rubbish it. <laughs> It's funny the the different styles of news. The, the weird one was in the nineties, where it looks the logo looks so fascist. Like it was like this. It did, didn't it? Uh, it's, 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 like, it's really what a weird creative decision that was to be like. We want the news to basically look like a German Nazi German sort of piece of propaganda. And you, know, <laughs> you know, it just yeah. But then it's suddenly it's been the same for a million years now, hasn't it? Really? Yeah. And and who wants to watch ITV news? ITV News is where the, the I mean, for British television, of course, American television, the news readers all have an agenda and an attitude. And there's a tradition in Britain that it's all very impartial. But the ITV news readers are a bit like, yeah, well, the Queen has just, um, you know, it's it's all like <laughs> there, there's some kind of implied attitude, whereas the BBC uh, are maintaining the illusion of impartiality all the time. Aren't they? It's a funny it's a funny difference, isn't it? I mean. Channel Four news, which is I like, better for that. Yes, yeah, you know, it's better to. It's funny scanning through the different news channels recently and looking at the different styles. It is, it's fast. It is fascinating. And you're right that uh, Channel Four, they're very, they're quite left wing, aren't they? And so, like Tories don't like going on <laughs> Channel Four news. Yeah, it's right funny thinking. that. Yeah. Whereas now you've got was it GB News, which is a whole different standard. Which was the the production on that was terrible. I have to. It was just some really weird creative decisions yeah like yeah. like you know making it stand out from others is one thing but then having a like a, d- a dark studio is just a bizarre choice do they have a dark i, I watch well, not, any, not anymore because they've had to they have basically had to change it because it looks so rubbish so they've had now to make they've, it look like every other news program so people will recognize it that's exactly it now they've got like the screens up and all that stuff but yeah when it launched it was like they had just like black sl- like that sort of gray wall behind them and like a screen and it just looks really like it looks a little bit like when i was at university and mm. they, we'd have to do like you know you you do the multi-camera modules and everybody's yeah, set yeah. looked like that in the dingy little cameras you know studio down there because they didn't give us any budget to dress the studio so That's of course probably the reason why gb news was like that then <laughs> Yeah, there's a, maybe it was made. Maybe it was made in uh, university halls with no budget. Who knows? But no, we're talking about a very peculiar practice today. Yes. Um, that is the name of what we are are talking about. We're not. I'm not. You know, leading up to me announcing what the peculiar practice is. We're talking about a very peculiar practice today. Naked leapfrog. Um, no, no. God, goodness, <laughs> no. Please, no. Um, Yes, but we're looking forward to that one. We've got emails, though, next, haven't we, Nick? Yes, that's right. Oh, and Shelley Dean will be along from uh, over the seas to chat with us about a very peculiar practice. We're looking forward to that. As you know, the Benji and Nick show is finishing, and I think there's, there'll be two more podcasts after this. The so, end is uh, approaching. It's approaching. Enjoy it while you can. That's what I'm doing. Absolutely. Absolutely. Right, let's have a look at these emails sent to podcast at nicholasbriggs.com. Lots of right emails up. coming in about the end of the podcast funny enough in fact this <laughs> email appropriately enough is called the end uh, <laughs> it was sent on the 9th of august in the year 0803 i don't know what was going on then was that after the romans or what? yeah 0803 yeah well after the romans i mean oh. what have they ever done for us uh it's from mark crozer anyway and he says hello benji nick and shelley uh, Shelley actually has an extra E in there just for future reference, Mark, for the next two podcasts. You can <laughs> get that right. Uh, I just wanted to say thanks so much for keeping me entertained over the last three years or so. I've loved every minute of the podcast. Every minute. 
I mean, every minute. Wow. Uh, every Sundays, single minute. <laughs> Sundays will never be the same again. I've decided to go back to the beginning and listen to every episode again once your last podcast has aired. Look forward to that. Oh, wow. That shows real dedication. Enjoying listening to Benji and Shelley shredding the execrable Buck Rogers in the 25th century. <laughs> uh, a view I agree with, of course. I remember watching this show back in the late 70s. And even then, when I was a kid, I knew it was a steaming pile of dung. <laughs> so I watched it every week, of course, because that's what you did back then. Absolutely it's right. Uh, it's probably fair to say, I think he's, he's wrote far, but I think you mean fair to say. Uh, for, no, no, I'm, no, I'm completely making this up. Uh, sorry, Mark. It's probably far too late in the day to suggest this, but I would have loved to hear your take on the 1930s serial Flash Gordon which I used to enjoy watching during school holidays. Yeah, me too. I recently introduced my 10 and 13 year old niece and nephew to chapter one, and they couldn't wait for it to finish. <laughs> <laughs> but I must say, I feel pretty much the same about it. It's so crappy, isn't it? It's just, have you ever watched it, Benji? No, I've the not. Original Flash I, yeah, yeah, I don't I'd think I want to. It's so awful. It's spectacular. Uh, all the best chaps. So long. And thanks for all the fish. Mark Crozer. Mark Crozer wrote his notes. So great. He wrote his name twice well i can uh come to you with news from the year 803 oh, yes. um purely because i like this person's name uh yes. the ruler crum from the crum. bulgarian empire begins crum. his territorial exp exp expansion and raise byzantine northern frontier he leads his warriors mostly burger uh, bulgers and slavs i was about to say burglars um <laughs> Thracians and Macedonians the across the Carpathian Mountains. I love that wow. word, Carpathian. Carpathian. Over the Danube River. Is that how you pronounce it? Danube? Throughout Danube, maybe. Yeah, uh, the throughout Danube, Trans yeah. Transylvania, Thrace, and Macedonia. There we go. Thrace. Crumb. Crumb. Yeah. Thrace, I say it, Thrace. Yes, I say it, Thrace, Crum. Well, I've got an email here from Crum. He said, why can't you read anything properly? I completely agree. We've got one here from Neil Allen. The subject of this one is, why, for the love of God, why? Uh, this one was uh, sent uh, 15th of the 8th, 2021, year of our Lord, 1448. Loads must have happened that year. Wow, I'll look it up. Halford's open for the first time. Um, <laughs> hi, guys. I'm still in shock over your decision to end the Benji and Nick podcast. Unlike your other great podcast contributors, podcasts, I can't understand your decision to stop. You've both seen Quatermass in the Pit. I believe it's the only it's only your podcast that is keeping humanity's race memories in check. Once you stop, people will revert to their basic instincts. And we've seen this in Asda on Black Friday. We have. Uh, it's going to be chaos and people aren't going to like it. Um, joking over, uh, thanks for all the wonderful podcasts that you've really enriched my life throughout your recommendations and wonderful, warm friendship. You should be very proud of what you've made. All the best for the future, and hopefully one day you'll get to I'll get to thank you in person. Lots of love Yay. and kind regards, Neil. Well, I do hope so, and thank you. It's ever so kind of you to give us such lovely feedback there. Thank we're sorry you, we're, we're sorry we're going. We are, we are. Um, by the way, 1448 was mm -hmm. a leap year starting on a Monday. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. How about where, that? Where did it leap to? Uh, to the end of the year. And on August the 14th, at the Battle of Oronichia, or Oronikea, Albania is victorious over Venice. Wow. Uh, wow. Uh, after a no score draw the previous week. Um, <laughs> right. Next email is those who fail to learn the lessons of Doug McClure are doomed to repeat them. <laughs> This is sent on the 16th of August in the year 1709. Look it up. On it. Uh, Kenneth Mann. This is from. Hi, Kenneth. You have written to Hello. us many times. Farewell at last to a podcast that has brightened my Monday mornings. Oh, he leaves it. He leaves it a bit before he starts. As this is probably my last email to you in your current incarnation, I thought I would devote it to the classic TV that doesn't exist but should. <laughs> One leap beyond, Sam Beckett leaps into the body of an NCIS agent in New Orleans and works out that he is there to help a stranded Starfleet officer get back to his own time, starring Scott Bakula, Scott Bakula, Scott Bakula, <laughs> and with a surprise cameo by Scott Bakula. Didn't see that one coming. 
Mission Possible. Martin Freeman leads a team of agents who only take on jobs that are fully costed and look achievable. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Baldic Resurrection. Baldric. Incredible... Oh, it is Baldic. No, yeah, right. it is. Isn't it? But that's what I thought as well. I thought it was a mistake. Baldic Resurrection. The incredible Robert Baldic is found frozen <laughs> in a block of ice and finds that sound investments allow him to investigate paranormal events conveniently located near Heritage Railways. I'd, I'd watch it. I would watch that. Definitely. I think there was a Robert Baldic thing actually starring. Um, the guy who was in All Creatures Great and Small, whose name I've forgotten now. Oh, Peter Davison. No, the other one, the old <laughs> one. The old oh, one. Old Peter Siegfried. Davison. Siegfried. <laughs> old the Peter. Siegfried line. You know Siegfried in the original? Yes, I do. I know. I can't remember his name, though. That HTV 70s show. Brother and sister evacuees from the East End find themselves embroiled in an ancient mystery in a rural village where a barrow's secret is kept safe by an immortal tramp. With the help of a kindly technical genius who happens to live there, they direct its power to save Bristol from the Luftwaffe, starring Patrick Charlton, <laughs> John Savadant, Edward Petherbridge, and two children whose IMDb entries only feature one Leon Garfield adaptation <laughs> in addition to this. It's absolutely superb, Kenneth. This is amazing. Uh, Barbary Coast. In turn of the century, San Francisco, William Shatner, <laughs> that just makes me laugh saying William Shatner, plays a secret agent master of disguise who operates out of a casino run by Doug McClure. <laughs> <laughs> Richard Keel plays the casino doorman. Uh, and hang on a minute. This one is actually real. Is that real? <laughs> Gosh, I didn't know. Uh, Bedivere. I laughed at it the most and it's actually real. Bedivere medieval fantasy drama where all the characters are named after figures from Arthurian legend but clearly aren't them and have adventures that have nothing to do with any recorded Arthurian legend but it was the only way to get the budget <laughs> Last Supper religious drama inspired by an old school BBC director realising that all the disciples in the painting are sitting on the same side of the table so it would be easy to shoot without changing his directorial style. <laughs> and it's good night from me. All the best to you and yours as you crawl down the ventilation duct that is life. Ken <laughs> Man, from my secret room behind the fireplace, opened by moving the hands of the nearby clock to the right. <laughs> oh, I wish that was the entrance excellent. to my... Oh, it is superb. But funny, actually, it, it made me think when you mentioned Bedivere and Arthurian stuff, it, it, it made me realize, uh, remember something that I'd watched not so long ago. Yes. It's an old 1970s adaptation of King Arthur uh -huh. um, with Maureen O'Brien as oh, yeah, um, yeah. Mordred. Yeah. And she's probably the only good thing in it. Uh, Morgan Le Fay. Uh, she, she's fantastic in it, but the rest of it is pretty dire. Yes, I remember it. It's very good. Who plays, who are the other leading parts? Uh, King Arthur was played by John. I've forgotten his name. I don't know his name. I'll have a look. Uh, John, I've forgotten his name. Yeah, that's a, it's a hyphenated name, though, isn't it? Oh yes. Oh, that's right. Yes, yes. It's uh, it's a very prolific actor. Uh, related to John, I can remember his name. Um, Andrew Burt was King Arthur. Uh, Felicity Dean as Guinevere. Maureen O'Brien as Morgan Le Fay. David Robb as Lancelot. Jeffrey Bateman as Gawain. I don't know uh, any of these people. Neither do I. James Simmons as Galahad. Robert Edison as Merlin. Um, Patsy Kenzie as the young Morgan. Wow. There we go. Who do, what did Andrew Morgan. Burt do? Morgan, is that? Or? Morgan, yeah, Morgan, Morgan. I don't know. <laughs> Would you like to invite <laughs> Shelley in? Um, yes, I will. Is she there? There she is, yes. and there she went. Right, she's oh, gone there. Oh. <laughs> hey, I just love clicking the button Toying. that whizzes I'm people being around. Shifted all around the screen. It's craziness. Welcome, Shelley. How hello. are you? Hello. 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 Uh, what is happening in your world? Uh, nothing. Okay, Yay. well. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about uh, a very peculiar practice then. And it's moving a very on. Very peculiar practice. Yes, yes. A very peculiar practice is a yep. surreal black comedy drama set in the health center of a British university, which ran for two series in 1986 and 1988. Uh, oh. ba -ba, we watched the first episode of the first season. Uh, it was called A Very Long Way From Anywhere where a fresh-faced young P GP, played by Peter Davison, joins the medical practice at Lowlands University. He is soon disillusioned by his eccentric set of colleagues. 
and eccentric I, is an understatement. <laughs> yes, quite, quite, quite. I, I would like to begin by saying that I thoroughly recommended this and was very enthusiastic about it. And then when I started watching it, I messaged both of you. Yes. I went, oh, my God, I'm not liking this at all. <laughs> but, but, but one of my problems was I watched it on the Daily Motion and there was oh an advert God. every two minutes and it just drove me Mine, not absolutely. only was there an advert every two seconds, it would restart when the ads were done. It would go oh! back to the beginning. No. I have none of these problems. So, so every single I time I had to start, and I had to kind of keep track of where I was. Oh, you know, like I, the, oh, it was it was a nightmare. Oh, so gosh. I I actually rewatched it this morning because I was so I was not going to be able to say anything nice about it. So I rewatched it, and I guess it remembers that you watched it. So then it's like, okay, we will take you take you out of the misery of having to watch all the ads so i watched it straight through this morning wow wow That's fair enough an interesting uh, but moving on Asian to facts. the second and third episodes same old problem so oh god yeah well yeah. I I just uh, I just bit the bullet, if that's the phrase, yeah, and uh, uh, and broke my teeth. No, and uh, <laughs> ordered the DVD. I just got it right, but I know yeah. in America the DVD is like two hundred dollars. It was two hundred and thirteen dollars. Wow, Shankar, <laughs> it is mental. It's on Amazon here. It's about fifteen or nineteen yeah. pounds. You know, and I bet I wouldn't even be able to play it if I ordered that one because it would Do you be not have multi region. Do Americans have multi region DVD players? No. We do. It's a yeah. standard thing in the UK. Yeah, you no, you can don't. play all. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, yeah. So I, I've watched the whole of the first series now. So okay. you can tell that my opinion of it changed. But I will shut up talking now and <laughs> someone else say something about a very peculiar practice before I come back. Well, it's well, a very peculiar practice, isn't it? It is. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> Shelley? <laughs> well, my like I just said, my first run through was absolutely detestable i hated every second of it because wow. i was so annoyed i'm hearing myself echoing by the way in oh. somebody's speakers or something i don't know but anyhow oh, i don't know if you guys can hear it and it's going to mess it all up but um no, can't hear anything okay can cool. you hear it now i can't hear anything at all Is anyone wait let, i have anything? to talk hello 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 nope it's done Maybe somebody's headphones were up loud anyhow sorry about that everybody so watching it the first time through i was miserable because of the experience yeah um and i did like i said i i did go on to watch more and mm. um ended up thoroughly enjoying as i was going through because the mm. first as it tends to be with every first episode of a series it's just about okay who are these characters yeah yeah and like so there's not much of a plot really so I was really looking forward to getting into the whole what it was, which was a doctor's office in a university, which brings in you have so many opportunities for some really great storylines. Yeah, it's a great idea for a yeah. setup, isn't it? Um, but I, and it did it got better as it went along, but the yeah. acting in the first the first episode was atrocious. Absolutely. I don't know what the director was thinking. Really? Say, yeah, I just I felt like every single person was just saying lines. I completely disagree. Oh, but, um, see. I, I see. I don't because I think it's a collection of really good actors. Uh, uh, like I said, that was just the first episode. I they it got better by the you know the second episode was like it was like a whole different. Game. I have a I have an inside fact for you, which may be relevant. Okay. Because uh, I worked with uh, David Troughton, who plays. Dr. Bob Robert Buzzard. Um, and um, not a pleasant he, name for a doctor, by the way. No, Dr. no, but Buzzard. he's not a pleasant doctor. <laughs> no, he? but yeah. it just, just by name alone, you think Buzzard. Buzzards go and they eat dead things. So, oh, well, that's obviously why Andrew <laughs> David know, gave know. him the name. Um, uh, David Troughton told me, and I don't know whether this is a, a widely known fact, that um, they filmed the first episode with a different actress playing Rosemary. Okay. Really? And she it it did not work out well and it oh, was wow. going so badly that they um that they reshot her off and, oh. and shot the episode again wow. now i don't know whether that that means that they're all a bit ah, but the time they did it again and, maybe and i know it, it they do certainly compared to the later episodes they do they do seem a bit overly tense i think yeah but but it's very difficult to get past that 
initial problem with the daily motion and how it's <sighs> and it and it makes you know and it see, I, I had I didn't experience that at all. Yeah, it was we just know. Fine, fine, <laughs> fine for me. Yes, but I know. think I think with with the level of tension though, I think it kind of works because it is that uh, awkward thing of you know you've got this you've got a sort of double frustrating scenario where this you know Peter Davison is thrown into this situation where everybody's chaotic and tense and, and irritate you know irritating uh and then you've got the flip side of that is that he is a tense irritating person in it as well and yes. so everybody so it's it is just chaos isn't it yeah. yeah yeah well he's he's coming in with this uh this view of i'm you know i love being a doctor it's so great and you know and then he gets there and everyone is just so disillusioned and so <laughs> miserable but it's like an insane asylum isn't yeah. it it's just crazy yeah. yeah the whole place is just nuts the sick university as um graham crowden says i also <laughs> worked with graham crowden by the way for three years on the nebulous comedy series so it was great to see him in full um he was swing. great as that character he he fully embodies that that uh whiskey swilling you know jaded his life didn't obviously turn out the way he expected it to turn yeah, out. Yeah. <laughs> and also you know, university eccentric as well, because there are plenty of those, you know, his office alone. I just thought, yeah, there are places like that. Well, people get sort of institutionalized, don't they? They they get stuck into their little mm -hmm. environment there. By the way, um, what Graham was wearing there was almost exactly what he does wear in real life all the time, <laughs> except he's smarter. He wouldn't have worn... Um, uh, uh, a cardigan under the suit, under the tweed suit. He would. He wears. He used to wear waistcoats. He used yeah, to come to the man. recordings at, for three series of Nebulous. Every time he arrived at the recording, he was wearing a three-piece tweed suit. Every time, fabulous. And, and quite Good often, and it wasn't always the same one as well. Yeah. And you'd no, say I to him, "I love that." Yeah, he's so stylish. You'd say to him, um, how, "How are you today, Graham?" And you go. Hanging on, and what he really meant was hanging on to life because he yeah. was so old. He said, "Well, I woke up again this morning." You know, he was sort of happy to be alive. You know, yeah. wow. get on him though. Why not? Quite. But frankly. he was. He, he, I have to say, it was very late on in his career, and he was. He made a lot of mistakes, and I did all the sound design and editing, mm -hmm. and most of my editing time was taken up with editing out all the expletives. I mean, he's such a <laughs> nice old man, but when he got something where you go oh you know and the most appalling language would come <laughs> yeah. out of his mouth and he'd be screaming it into the microphone then go back to the scene again and doing it again <laughs> oh god oh what's the matter with me he used to get so cross with himself it is so funny when the most unexpected people have a bit of a potty mouth when they make mistakes you just yes. like and, and the most the, the most insane swear words, like these combinations of swear words. Yeah. That you're like, I've never even Absolutely. heard those words put together so before. What? <laughs> Absolutely right. That is what happens. And then you're so, like, you're like, as you're directing, you're just writing it down going, oh, I like that one. Yeah. <laughs> That's I'll be reusing swear. that. <laughs> I heard a weird thing the other day, which made me laugh, which is um, it was, it was an American phrase. But I don't know why I found it so funny, but it was just for the word, the word hell. Uh -huh. They said, "What in the what in the name of H H E double double hockey, hockey sticks?" sticks. Yeah. yeah, I've never heard H E double I, hockey I sticks. I think the was... first time I heard that was from the TV show Mash. Okay, what when I was a kid, that's, I think that's sticks. where I don't know if that's where it originated, or but that's where I first heard that, and I just loved that. What I thought it was great fun. H E double L hockey sticks or double hockey sticks, yeah, double hockey well, sticks. And of course, in America, um, the references to religious things like hell and being yeah, damned, so that's far more it's far more sensitive in America, isn't it? I remember the the Doctor Who uh, um, magazine or Doctor Who weekly strip, uh, City of the Damned for the American version had to be changed to City of the Cursed because damnation was too upsetting for mainstream American oh, culture. The I, thought you, I thought you were going to say <laughs> City of the Darned. <laughs> the darned. Darn it. The darned. <laughs> it, was, it was all about socks. It had yeah. <laughs> City of the Yarn. Um, I'll tell you one thing I thought in this mm. is that, um, that David Troughton uh, looks just like Harry Melling. You know, um, who Harry is, of Melling? course... Is, is essentially his, uh, his I guess nephew. it would be his nephew. Yeah, who he was. If he was in, you'd know him if you from, ha from Harry Potter. He was. Um... He was in um, the chess thing. 
Oh, yeah, Queen's Gambit. He was in Queen's oh, Gambit. Yeah, 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 I know. Yeah. He was yeah. the one that he was looks, obsessed with her. He yes, looks just like him. And I thought, yeah. wow, you know, that's that young Troughton look is There's so the, distinct, uh, isn't it? Yeah, there is a Troughton look, isn't it? But there? he looked yes. a lot like his father. The, yes. Because I, I only, when I think of David Troughton, I think of him now. And yes. he's decidedly older, as you would be, you know, 30 yes. years later, 30 plus years later. Um, but I thought he looked a lot like his father. Just he has a longer, chi a longer chin yes. than his dad does. But it was very... Uh... The jowliness of the Troutons. Yeah. I was just talking to a friend of mine uh, before all this this morning and just mentioned we were, talk we were both talking about getting much older. And I said, I I've finally got the face that, you know, unfortunately I wished for when I was a kid. You know, when I was about seven, nine years old, I really wanted to look like Patrick Troughton. And I used to look in the mirror and try and make my face more jowly. Yeah, now, you want those, those lines. Yeah. There, the laughter lines, and I don't want those lines. Yeah. I would do anything I don't want in the them, world. <laughs> I've got them, you know. I, know. I have got that face now, but you know, fair enough. I'm 60 in a few weeks' time, so I think that's allowed, isn't it? I'm allowed but to. Your, your beard does much. blend in with the lines, though. So you, you, it's a perfect sort of my beard, beard, yeah. beard socket, yeah. isn't it? Yes, so I've disguised my age with a big white beard. No, I haven't. <laughs> See, women, women can't hide it. That's uh, that's that's the the curse of. Well, I mean, I guess if I stopped plucking, um, no, I'm kidding. You did. <laughs> enormous beard. Yes, I yeah. could join this circus, the bearded yeah. lady. Unwanted but hair. Team. We could do a whole podcast on unwanted hair. On haunted uh, hair. Yes. After the Benji and Nick show finishes, uh, <laughs> Shelley and I will be doing a new podcast on unwanted hair. Yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you something about. Uh, a very peculiar practice that yes, I did please think. do get back on the subject. I thought it was had vibes of the Biderbeck tapes in it. It was had a bit oh, of a yeah. Biderbeck eccentricity to it. <laughs> well, it's got one of the same actors in it, and it has got one of the same actors in. But I was thinking it before she. Oh, I was raising my hand while there was music playing. I'm raising my hand because I, I don't know. Ice what cream, you're anybody? How oh, is an ice that... cream van? Yeah. What? What? Is, what show are you talking about? I don't um, know what it is. You know the Biderbeck tapes. No. No. You don't know it. I thought you, you. I'm sure you saw that one with us. No, it was, but no. it was way. Before, oh wow! Really. Mm. Oh, it was. It was a, a program essentially around the same time, probably. Um, Barbara Flynn was in that. Who I uh, loved it was, so much it was, in this, by the yeah, way. Yeah, she's amazing. She's, I, the, and she was the second casting, you see. So right, she came in, and they all loved her because she rescued it for them. You see, Barbara. Yeah, Barbara. No, the Biderbeck thing was slightly later, I think. Was it? Was it really? Oh, yeah, I don't, I don't know. A very, a very, a very, a very, a very Glorious, peculiar the... practice was 1986. This was so yes. the Biderbeck, Biderbeck, the Biderbeck affair, the Biderbeck tapes, and something else. The Biderbeck, this, the Biderbeck, uh, when was affair it? was 1985, a year oh, before, a year oh. before. So one could argue that they brought her in for this. Thought she was. She was great in the Biderbeck affair. This is a bit Biderbecky. She'd be perfect for this. Bring her in. She's good, at, good at the <laughs> surreal. I mean, they're both written by excellent writers. Alan Blater wrote the Biderbeck affair and the sequels, and isn't one of my favourite writers. And Andrew Davies uh, later became famous at the BBC for adapting Pride and Prejudice, and then has become the sort of go-to mammoth. Yeah. yeah, I mean. Uh, and he he became quite famous. People knew his name, and that's very unusual for a TV writer, especially well, in this country. The the little trivia about how this show came about oh, yeah. was that he was hired by the BBC to adapt something else, uh -huh. and he worked on it. Did he did three scripts of it, and then finally went to them and said, "I can't do this. This is this is garbage. I can't do this." And they said, wow. "Okay, well, give us our money back." Because he was paid to do it. And he was like, oh, <laughs> I better I do spent it. it. <laughs> so he said, OK, well, what if I come up with something new and we can, you know, go from there? And so that's why he wrote this. <gasps> and it was based on his he used to be a lecturer at a, a university in the 70s. And so he pulled from that. And created this. Oh. Now, this is really interesting. Two things. First thing is he wrote novel adaptations. <coughs> Sorry. Oh, my. Is that, I object. Is that really upsetting? <laughs> I, might I object never, to that. Never say novel adaptations in Benji's presence. <laughs> <laughs> novel adaptations. <laughs> um, 
which are apparently, according to Alan Barnes, my friend and colleague, are superb and really interesting. The other thing is that in about episode six or maybe even seven of this, I can't remember, a writer, the head of the creative writing department comes in and he says to Dr. Dacre, I wrote a series for the BBC, but yeah. it didn't work out. And I, I um, so I owe them three episodes worth of money. So I'm writing something else for them. Yeah. He wrote so he, that into it. Yes. And yeah, it was he, the same amount of money. It was 17,000 pounds. <laughs> And so he wrote it into this, into this in a very meta way. So, and apparently the book, oh, I think there's more than one book, but anyway, uh, the book has um, has this writer character in it who comes up to Stephen Dacre and tries to discuss this whole business about what. I wonder whether Alan didn't realize that this is actually in the series as well because he keeps saying, "What shall I put in my story?" Oh, it keeps coming true. Yeah, <laughs> that, that's the thing. He keeps writing really daft things about strange nuns and and what have you, and then he then he finds out it's actually true in the university. Oh, so it's an funny. interesting little meta thing going on there. Actually, um, I would like to nominate the episode. I can't remember what it's called now. Episode three. Do you know what episode three is called? Have you have you seen episode three? Yet? I was watching it. Earlier it's the one with Timothy I... West playing Doctor Fury, Professor Fury. Professor Fury. And I sent Benji a clip of it. Great fun, which I, great which fun. Which I just for a laugh, I'll see if I can play it for you. Uh, which just he's this mad, mad, angry professor, um, and he 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 has a nice line in uh, insults. Let's see if we can. Uh, except it's playing it with this. Here we go. Because I was starving, do bandy words with me. But he, said, and then he tells the server to tell the, the the cook that he wanted to fist fight him. And then she comes back and says, he's, he's not in the mood for a fist fight. He's out in the parking lot letting the air out of your tires. Because <laughs> 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 for a moment you think that waitress is just going to be some awful extra who can't yeah. speak. And she's actually really rather yeah. good, isn't she? Yeah, <laughs> She gives it real welly. Yeah, oh, that's great. Yeah. And he sounds off like that about everything in that episode. And I love it when he's being pinned to the floor at the end. And he says, mm -hmm. I want you to know, Dacre, that this is entirely personal. I still think you're a damn good doctor. <laughs> He's and such they a good actor, him, don't they? They yeah. I mean, really, uh, Timothy West is amazing. I've worked with him twice. The first time that I've told, have I told you the, the the club biscuit story? I don't think so. I was in one room in the studio, and he was in the other, and he didn't know I was there. He thought he was alone in the green room. And in those days, they used to put out a bowl of chocolates and things for people to have. And uh, but now, you know, we're more weight conscious. We haven't done that for years. And he uh, he was sorting through the biscuits and talking to himself, and he said, "Shall I have a club biscuit? Shall I have a club biscuit? Yes, I think I'll have a club biscuit." And he so then and I went in and he was just eating a club biscuit on his own. They're a particular kind of biscuit. I don't know whether you have them in the states. Club no. biscuits. So if you want a lot of chocolate on your biscuit, join our club. That's the commercial for club biscuits. Um, and I'm gonna so, I'm gonna write to them and say, can you be our sponsor? Yes, <laughs> club biscuit just... sponsors the last two Benji and Nick shows. <laughs> so years later, I worked with him again, and I said, oh Timothy, I must say, you know, the last time we worked together. He said, no, I'm afraid I don't remember. I'm far too important. No, he didn't say the last bit, but he didn't remember. <laughs> of course he didn't. Uh, and I and I told him the story of the Club Biscuit. And he just looked at me and I thought from where I thought, have I massively offended him? He just looked at me very slyly and said, yes, that sounds like me. <laughs> <laughs> such a lovely man. Such an incredible. And, so, and like his son, Sam, as well, just such a joy for acting. You know, yeah. they just love it. I mean, they're Sam the best kind of me, people. Yeah. Sam said to me, if you're offered a big finish, it's your duty to do it. If you're not doing anything else, it's your duty. You absolutely <laughs> should do it. You know, and I just love <laughs> it. They've lived in that rarefied atmosphere of extremely talented actors visiting the house, being their yeah. friends. You know what I mean? So they, they live in a slightly different universe to the rest of us. But it's a gentle and kind and lovely and thoughtful universe. I really like it. See, I can't think of Timothy West without just thinking of bees. I just can't 
gets that. I don't know if you ever remember this. Hammer. He was, he was in the um, Tales of the Unexpected Tales episode, the Unexpected. Royal Jelly. Uh, I don't know if Shelley. It's this fantastic no. um, short uh, anthology series. I've heard um, of. I've heard of it. I think they maybe did an American version of it too. And he was quite young in this, and it was back in the day. And he had. Um, they had a little baby, and um, he was a beekeeper, and he kept bees, and um, and the, he's, they start noticing that the, the baby, of course, is getting bigger and bigger, and it's growing to a huge, you know, size. And it turns out that he's been mixing in the the royal jelly into the milk, and of course, as he's doing it, he he is having it as well, and he slowly starts turning into a bee. And I always remember him because he starts talking. He starts talking like this. Like that. And so whenever I see him, I just think of him going, Yes. <laughs> Do you know, it reminds me of Nebulous. There was an episode of Nebulous. Uh, Gra Graham Duff created the series, and he wrote this episode where there was a man who was part B, played by Steve Coogan. So we had hours <laughs> of ridiculous laughter with Steve Coogan experimenting how to turn into a bee. And he was saying, do it like this. <laughs> you know, he just, yeah, that was part yes. of much fun. So he was obviously, Graham Duff was obviously riffing on that Tales of the Unexpected episode. And I, and I reckon as well that Steve Coogan, because he's a knowledgeable chap, he knows his telly really well. I wouldn't be surprised if he would have seen that as well well i'm knows... not entirely sure that he didn't mention it while we were recording but i can't remember for sure I know <laughs> doing a fake memory there but yeah it sounds ephemery. like the sort of thing that might have <laughs> ephemery ephemeral yeah ephemeral. <laughs> but, i mean i'll tell you my conclusion from watching the first series and just watching the first episode of the second series i could be wrong but they totally lose it in the second series they put peter davison in charge of the practice and it, they put it and they've got an American vice chancellor and it all just becomes certainly in the first episode of the second series, slightly too arch and very overly conscious of his success. Whereas the first series, it's very experimental and you can tell Andrew Davis is thinking, I don't know whether everyone's going to like this or not. I'm just going to write some crazy stuff. Also, they ditch the girlfriend at the beginning of the second series, and you just wonder whether maybe Peter Davison didn't get on with her or something. <laughs> you know? Yeah, maybe. I mean, that it's the same because she's good, and it needs that sort of, you know, that character there. They but, very um, much dismantle the format at the end of the first series quite seriously. You know what I mean? You can see them taking it apart and losing people and people getting, you know. Uh, well, so I did read a review that somebody had commented that the person playing the girlfriend in the first series that her that was in people's general opinion at the time i guess was the worst part of the show wow was her not necessarily her as an actress but just the character that that people were just like why why is this yeah. character here um, i think they didn't like the strength of her because she was a really strong woman who didn't well, take any we nonsense. also had that was already set with uh uh, the um rosemary Rose character Lynn, yeah so but this that... was a more because she rosemary is a sort of very extreme feminist woman who would rather exterminate all men i think <laughs> whereas whereas uh, uh lynn i think is the name yes. of the character isn't it lynn um she's much more reasonable but she has got uh she's got control of that relationship she mm -hmm. controls everything in it but she's not anti-male so I, it's interesting that people didn't didn't like that Can because you hear that? I, I, Right? No. 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 It's my telephone. It's a bell telephone. It's downstairs. Just for right, your this this program is neatly cutting it out. <laughs> um I I remember having that slight dislike of her before when I first watched it mm. and noting that I didn't have that this time. So isn't that interesting? Yeah. Yeah, that is. I, 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 welcome, I, didn't have I welcomed her character her. this time. I think okay. people found it annoying because Peter Day, this is these are just silly theories, but Peter Davison was a real heartthrob. I mean, you know, there have been times in my life when I've mentioned to people, women, that I work with Peter Davison and they go all week at the news. Oh, Peter Davison, he's so lovely. And I think that they're used to seeing Peter Davison being the, the, the heartthrob who gets the girl, mm. whereas he was rubbish at getting the girl in this and she does all the favors for him. And I think. I think that maybe that was contrary to people's expectations at the time, maybe.
Don't That's know. possible. Yeah. It's a good swerve and it works yeah. really well. It works really well to see that. And, but also to see he does, he does such a good job of it as well, you know, cause he's a superb actor. He is, uh, he, you know, and he did a great job of it there. And, you know, I, I rate this highly. I will give it a four out of five exclamation marks. It's not perfection, but it's, yes. it's pretty, pretty darn good. Isn't it? You wonder how much they were having a joke where he has to keep saying in the first episode, I'm a real doctor. I'm the new doctor. <laughs> yeah. He keeps having to say all that. You could easily cut that in with clips from Doctor Who, couldn't you? I get, I'll give it four exclamation marks out of five as well. Um, I'm going to be less is less generous just based mm. on my, my viewing experience. And if anybody could get me <laughs> a version of it where I can watch it all the way through, I would be very happy um because like i said i st really started to enjoy it but having the commercials and everything yeah. just just it takes you out you're out of it it's, totally. it's like you totally. know so i'm gonna say three and a half i'm gonna give it a little bit more well, that's very generous three, considering I, the yeah. your staccato experience yeah but um but i did get to see the first episode all the way through the second time i watched it so i just have a question hmm. about the theme song Oh, God, it's awful, isn't it? I absolutely hate it. Why? El 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 Why Brooks. does it exist? <laughs> I well, know. What, 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 what is, what's exist, sorry? The, the theme, theme song. I love the theme song. I oh, think it's what amazing. What does it have to do oh, with the I show? It was awful. I, love, oh, no. I thought it was great. Oh, I, it's, after... to, it's totally to do with the show. The words are all, the words yeah, are repeated in the, a lot the, of the titles. The vibe it's set, like I always think of theme song for a show has to set up what, you know, you're going to be experiencing. And and the first time watching it, I thought, what is this? Is this I a loved comedy? It. Is it a, I don't know. Wow. Oh, and, I but the music it. was just too like, hey, day, we love you. We lead you. Da, da. Like, <laughs> do, do you want to know what, do you want to know yeah. what I did when I first heard it for the first time? Well, of course Pride. you did, because you're Benji I, and you I, love I ran it. Music. I ran it back and listened to it again. I really you know, liked it. I really liked <laughs> it. I, I hate Elkie Brooks's voice. I really <laughs> Elkie Brooks is well, that kind. Of, we love you. Oh God, it makes my skin crawl. Yeah. Uh, but oh, that reminds me, the incidental music is so annoying. All that really awful, obvious fake instruments. Just, you know, the, the fake somebody saxophone. with a, It's somebody with a keyboard. That's what it is. Yeah, I know, yeah. This was this was at the time where home, you know, composing. Basically, the nineties, as as we know, was like all about. I have a keyboard, it can do everything. And we're approaching <laughs> yes. the late 80s where that's starting to, to be a thing. And so, Nick yeah, has this... a stack on his wall right behind him right now. <laughs> yeah, there's Nick oh, with yeah. his three yeah. synthesizers. <laughs> have I, got any... I, I have got one. Any... Uh, it's not right here, but it was. it's my daughter's. I bought it I only really it used the one now. at the bottom, although I have used the one at the SH-101, the Roland. I have been using that on some of the third Doctor stuff. Yeah, it's just, it really dated it. Yeah. you know it did date it but at the time it would have been absolutely you know oh, yeah, it would have been great. this is amazing. nice and modern this is really cool yeah. you know but yes, yeah but it, it does is... it does undoubtedly date it i completely yes, agree totally. it's totally. just for me and i it was just too poppy it was just too for what we were about to watch you know you got this guy but that would have been like uh, there would have been a lot of music like that around okay. the time so All it right. would have just yeah. sounded very contemporary i think that's right. the thing uh, yeah, I pr Benji, probably would have gone for really more good taste in music, and I, I like uh, I like a good bit of rubbish music, but this was just offensively bad. I felt I I do like offensively bad things yeah. at times. I would have gone <laughs> for more if if I was doing it. I probably would have gone for something sort of maybe some sort of strings or something, something a yeah. bit of something with that university sort of vibe, with maybe a funny little maybe maybe strings with a funny. A uh, clarinet or an oboe or something, yeah, yeah. doing funny things throughout. <laughs> yeah, or like, yeah, or like a trumpet or a trombone would be good. I, I just well, longed for because I was watching on DVD. I was desperate that the skip intro button doesn't exist when you're watching a DVD. <laughs> <laughs> and if Blood you fast forward, landscape. you're bound to shoot past. You know yeah. because. My DVD machine's ability to read the infrared signal from the remote is, you know, it's, <laughs> it's like my ability to read without my glasses, basically. Yeah. You were saying, I, no, Blot on a Landscape. Wasn't that the show that had the... <laughs> yeah, that was Blot. Yeah, that was it. Okay. <laughs> Listen, what are we going to watch next time? I, I would love to suggest another thing that's got a very in the title, actually, but I don't know whether Shelley can get access to it. What would that be? It would be a very British coup, which is on. Oh, that's British yeah. Breakfast, which is a very uh, British. I've been rewatching yeah. it. It's it's really good. 
I'm checking my Brit box. A very British, a very British coup. coup. The new. That's a very offensive thing to say, apparently, to Scottish people. Och, the new, as a sort of... He um, just offended all of our Scottish yeah. listeners now. I didn't so. realise how offensive it was, so I'm sorry I even said it. No, not on not that. Not my Brit box, nope. Oh, well, we can't do that then. Okay. Well, I did think of one thing, because I checked the other day to see whether we actually covered it. And can you believe we've got this far down the Benji and Nick show ladder? Yeah. Uh, and we've not covered it, and that is... Oh, hold on. I'll get, the theme, I'll get the theme tune. Oh, this is very exciting, Benji. Yeah, you'll appreciate it. I, I hope so. <laughs> Uh, yes, come on. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah. It is the sandbaggers. Because I've I've never really sat down. Well, I watched I've got it all. And I yeah. remember at the time I sat down to watch it. I think I must have not been. You in said the mood. it was too talky. Yeah. I said it was too talky. You, you've got to get. You've got to watch it. at least three episodes of it to get invested in the characters. Guess what's on my Brit box? What? The Sandbaggers. Wow. It's not, it's not on ours. I it's don't not think. on ours. Except the fact that every single time it's if it's on yours, it's not on mine, and vice versa. So well, there you are. You've got access to. Well, it. I've got it on my BritBox. So um, both I've me seen and Nick it. Have it? Yeah. And, yeah. I do. Uh, yeah, I suppose I should rewatch it. Uh, but I, I just thought to myself, you've been wanting me to properly watch it. People yeah. have been writing in for years saying we should cover it, and we haven't Good for call. whatever Good reason. Call. So I feel like this is as we're entering the the Benji and Nick show kind of curtain call. We should address these <laughs> absolutely criminal things that we we haven't covered yet. So, well, it's criminal that we haven't covered it. It's not a criminal thing. <laughs> no, it's quite the opposite, actually. Um, it's really good. Oh god! So you say I should watch three up the first three? At least three. Yeah, dun, ideally dun, you dun, should dun, watch dun, the whole dun, first dun, series. Dun. Okay. Well, it, I'm it, almost it, done with Benadorm. Just so. warn, warn <laughs> Benadorm. She's addicted to Benadorm. <laughs> addicted. <laughs> warning, <laughs> warning, 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 warning. <laughs> Dry studio bound multi camera film inserts, but you know, there's there's nothing action packed. There's no incidental music. It's very, very much that kind of drama that was being put out on British television in the mid seventies. Is that right? Mid or late seventies? What is Would it, it be? Yeah, mid. I reckon. Yeah, but yeah. and unbelievably, it's set in London. Seventy eight to eighty. Oh, right, there you go. It's set in London, but it's made by Yorkshire Television. Go figure that, folks. Right then, uh, get close to the microphone. Yes. Well, if from any me, of you out there, oh, uh, yes. If any of you out there have forgotten to send in your bye-bye emails to podcast at nicholasbriggs.com, this is your chance. Benji's eating his microphone. <laughs> oh, tasty. Bye-bye yes, from me, Nick. Bye. Do send them in as goodbye from me, Benji. And from me, Shelly Dean. It's goodbye. Press stop now. Zzz.